Hey guys, welcome back to another um, another video for my uh, YouTube channel over here, um, in which I am going to um, discuss basically um, a project I'm working on at the moment for um, basically automating stuff on the Linux desktop using the very nice X do tool uh, command line interface, and it is a little bit intimidating. Uh, but certainly what it can achieve is quite powerful and I'm quite excited about it. Uh, so this firstly is Linux 19, 1910, uh, which is not an LTS release. It's a, um, it's a rolling release, but um, these utilities at will not be installed. Um, I'm not sure if XDU2 is actually in the repositories uh, or sorry, if, if it automatically comes on systems either, but in any event, uh, they are both definitely in the repos. Uh, so those two CLIs that I'm using here for this uh, this quick video are uh, at at and uh, x do tool. Um, and for those that are not uh, familiar with at, basically it's a it's like a one-time uh, cron job um, kind of a setup. So basically, you know, cron jobs. Um, if you open up your cron tab on your system, um, it has. Uh, you know, jobs that are supposed to run on a recurrent schedule. So whether that's, you know, every second, every day, every month, uh, every year, such and such a command, uh, but that would occur every single day. Um, and at basically is a once off, once off event scheduler. So you can just schedule one time events. So that's what I'm hoping to do here. Um, I have tested the script um, and it is running relatively uh, nicely. Um, but you can also, um, you know, and I've set the at that this command's going to run at a certain, uh, a certain uh, time tonight, basically. So what this does, really, I'm just going to call up the script in uh, Kate here in my uh, in my VM, or in my IDE rather. Um, so firstly, um, you know, I'm relatively new to Bash scripting, and uh, by no means an expert at this at all. In fact, a rookie. Um, but uh, I, I am just kind of playing around and this is a quite a cool project that I think I think demonstrates well um, the potential for XDU tool, uh, what it can do and I'm making this video actually because I saw that the XDU tool tutorials on YouTube uh, while they're excellent and there's a lot more to dive into um, I couldn't really understand the practical practical points of it so maybe this video will, uh, will explain that a little bit better so basically this is uh, something that I'm going to be running off my laptop and my laptop is like an old Linux laptop that um, is just connected to a widescreen television. Um, the first, So the first thing I've done um, in this script is just make sure that the outputs are correct. So there's another good tool I recommend in Linux called Arander and that's kind of, it's a very lightweight um, display manager. So these are my three displays I have in front of me right now. Um, the nice thing what you can do is uh, once you have your displays as you want them you can then save the layout um, and it will give you a uh, it'll give you a bash script so I've just called that bash script uh, and you can inspect it and you can see it's just kind of a couple of lines um, calling it's basically just a front end a render is a front end for X render and X render uh, calls you know DVD the DVD output uh, is primary. This is its resolution. This is its position. Its rotation is normal, um, and uh, the position actually organizes these. So the if I go back to my screen layout here, it goes HDMI two DVD, DVD, DVI and then HDMI one. Uh, so it's setting HDMI uh, zero zero. Then the DVI comes next. It's nineteen twenty pixels across, go, working from left to right, and HDMI. One is 100, 1920 times two from the far left. Um, so that 1920 times two, and they're all 1920 by 1080 um, resolution displays. Um, so it has the order there as well. So that little command that you're calling, that bash script, which is really just one uh, big command, um, basically sets me up so that if, if this is I actually have set this up as a startup script on the laptop. Uh, this is just so in case it's not running in that configuration and the laptop is has its screen turned on. Uh, and the reason for this is because you need a bit more fancy commands than I have actually put in to really do XDU tool properly. You should ideally, you know, refer to a window ID and to a screen. I've just kind of adopted a bit of a quick and dirty approach. Uh, but this should work if the if the um, if there's only one screen as my thing is configured. A couple of quick things: I'm muting volume and then setting it to 100%. So this is toggling Alsa mixer. Uh, firstly, unmuting it. So if it's muted, this will unmute it. 
um i think that might actually be um should be toggled there's a li this can be a little bit buggy if it's muted to unmute it uh, then setting it up to 100%, so I'd, I'd basically be setting the uh, volume on the actual TV and not on the OS, so the OS should be delivering its 100% volume. Now, um, so I'm watching this show on Netflix called Stiesel, and this basically says, you know, this Google Chrome is very simple if you're not, um, if you're not doing any variables, so you, there are, this is bit, I'm not sure if there's even a man page, but uh, oh, there is a man page. You can tack on incognito to get in incognito mode or in, in a new window, or you can even actually uh, open it in a specific profile. Um, but uh, if you just do Google Chrome followed by the URL, it'll just basically open this uh, in Chrome. So if I just um, bring this guy back over to my screen here, if I just run that, uh, it's just opened the Stiesel in a different uh, window here. Sorry, into the into the Chrome I had open. So um, now, so far so good. But the problem is, um, if we just copy this into a browser, um, this it'll just arrive at this page, and that obviously will not start it playing now. If you haven't started watching a Netflix show yet, um, you might get lucky. Like if I click on to Tiger King, uh, for example, Tiger King is the same thing actually. Um, if I click on to this, um, if you haven't if you haven't watched something before, I'm just trying to get this to work. Uh, it might actually start playing, but basically you want to go like this and see what r see what happens when you get to the show you want to watch. Now I'm just this is again for the purpose of automating it. Now, how do you get uh, the script to automatically click on this button? So I'll just show you what else I've done on my script. Um, using XDo tool, you basically, um, so I wait five seconds after this opens sleep. Five, that's the number of seconds. And that just um, basically pauses things for five seconds. So any kind of banner advertisements or uh, JavaScript elements can kind of display themselves and because it's all relying on the this coordinate here X do tool move mouse to X and to Y this this is in pixels um, and then click immediately on uh, on on that part of the screen so I'll show you how I found that um, mm -mm -mm. we just find the command quickly X do tool find current mouse position not particularly hard to find it's the first stack overflow result for that I'm just going to copy this into my terminal here um, so it is x do tool get mouse location minus minus shell tac tac shell so what I did was I basically just moved my mouse here um, and I literally now my mouse I'm going to go nice and centered on the button here I have my right hand off my mouse and my left hand hovering on the enter button I clicked enter and you can see what it's come up with here is the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the screen, and it's also giving me the window ID. And as I said, um, if you're doing this properly, uh, you will. That's really the the more elegant way to do it. You should certainly also refer to the screen. But again, because I'm on one um, uh, one screen on this, I'm just doing this kind of a little bit quick and dirty. So uh, one five five and forty seven. Now, one thing to say is you want to check your zoom here. So I'm I was zoomed at hundred percent. Let me just do this one more time. 204 because ah, I move slightly um, let's get nice and centered again let's let, let's let's take the, these coordinates 131 and 484 and let's just over 131 and 484 131 484 very close to what was in the script um, so basically it's gonna move for me onto that screen position and then it's gonna click so this will take us this far uh, then I told it to wait for five more seconds, and now I wanted to click on the uh, on this guy over here. So I repeated the process. I, this is a full screen button, um, um, and I uh, basically uh, this did not work when I just tested it. So I'm not expecting a miracle to happen then to work again. Although we are we are watching Stiesel. Um the idea was for the mouse to come over here and click on um, click on basically the um, the button and then to make that into full screen that it did get over the button on my test for some reason it didn't uh, click X do tool um, there is another way I'm just thinking on my feet now um, that I could basically because f11 will also put this into full screen mode 
Uh, so if I could tell it to uh, hit uh, F11, that would also work. So I'm just going to actually add this into the script, and you never know, this might be... This is my first time trying a simulated keystroke, and XD2 is very powerful. It can do both mouse, and you can see this is click one is uh, is left click. I believe click two is a right click. Click three is a context click. Um, so it can do everything in terms of automating your uh, simulating keystrokes and mouse movements, and even dragging and dropping stuff. So it's very powerful. As I said, I'm just really scratching the surface of bash scripting and this this CLI itself but it did work so let me just give a shot let's try to um, x do tool key f11 and then let's end the script so that should be entering f11 and f11 will um, ma should make it full screen so without any further ado I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna get it here and I'm gonna show you how this works now I've added this to my git to a github project you can follow me on github my username is Daniel Rosehill JLM and uh, yeah, just as I learn, I'm just posting these basically. Now, in order for this to work, I just need to make sure I'm not in any other Chrome windows on my other screen. So I've only got one Chrome open and let us, let us try. Just navigating, of course, you need to give it the right uh, executable, make your bash script executable. executable. Uh, and then as I said, I'd be using at now, um, plus whatever you know um, 2130 today or April April 12 and then basically saying just run the script at that time one thing I did do in my initial script was I actually added that as well um, you know uh, basically adding an at command saying to turn off the computer so that's another cool thing you can do is you can have this get this script running from at and then have an at command in the script itself in order to turn off your machine after, I don't know, two or three episodes, what, that would be probably uh, 200 minutes or whatever. Uh, you can work it out. So let's give the script a go. There we go. So far so good, it's open Stiesel. Now the mouse in five seconds should move and it's clicked resume, perfect. Now we are watching it and there we go. It's either, I can't tell if it's hit F11, it did hit F11 because the little dialog windows come up and we now have Stiesel running in um, I'm gonna actually not show much not show too much of this because I'm worried that the copyright uh, copyright automated detection stuff on YouTube is gonna is gonna accuse me of uh, of uh, trying to trying to cast uh, Stiesel which obviously is not my intention at all so that was successful so that basically that little script I built uh, would be enough to uh, you basically you know you can just set that as an at command um, leave your laptop open uh, at nine o'clock now in terms of what I would like to do with this you know I might want to be um, you know perhaps there's if you're emceeing an event and you'd want to uh, put up a video at a certain time and you want everything to run like clockwork uh, you could just have the laptop open, have it connected to a projector, and uh, you know, and just so long as the power configuration is not, uh, you don't have like you know automatic screen blackout and automatic power off. Uh, that tends to screw up projects like this. But so long as you have all those correct, um, that this would work. You know, completely. You know, you could open up a video, stream a video. Uh, you might not even need to use X2 tool, but that was the point of this video, and you know close a window or whatever else you want to do uh, I could have made the script a lot more elaborate but uh, so that was it basically just a little bash script uh, putting the output to the TV getting the audio right opening up my series on Netflix waiting for five seconds mousing over to, to the resume button and again make sure you're uh, capturing these coordinates when your screen's 100% and it could change based upon the series you're looking at or the UI of Netflix it might the UI might change and these could be so you might need to recalibrate uh, clicking and I could have added might have made um, QAing a bit easier if I've add, if I'd added a smaller pause here then clicking then another five seconds and then moving over to the full screen button here clicking on clicking on that um, and uh, I just I added both uh, clicking on the full screen button um, and F11 because I wasn't sure that didn't work the first time so in the end the F11 worked and I could again say keep that running for a certain amount of time and then finish it so 
So that's it. I uh, hope this uh, little tutorials, tutorial is, is, is the wrong word, I keep using it, but this little demo of what you can do with XDo tool in the real world, because as I said, some of the videos, while showing much more elaborate uh, things, were, you know, they were like creating blank files. I kind of wanted to show uh, what you can actually do uh, for, you know, practical applications of this very cool automation tool for the Linux desktop. Thank you for watching and uh, any queries, uh, do not hesitate to reach out. That's my website and there's a contact form there, Daniel Rosehill. Rosehill was 2Ls.co.il and uh, have a great day.